Hey Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick, I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Weekly. This week, a special thanks go out to our sponsors for this episode, Bank of America and CNA. Well, today we're going to take a look at the red planet Mars. It's currently easily seen in the evening sky, although it's not nearly as bright as it was back in October during opposition. So why the sudden interest right now? Well, last week, two spacecraft entered orbit around the red planet, and a third is scheduled to land on its surface tomorrow, February 18th. So what better time to re-familiarize ourselves with the red planet in the night sky? So we're going to begin looking southwest about an hour after sunset tonight. About halfway up in the sky, you'll see the nearly half-lit moon, and above it is the reddish-orange Mars. Tomorrow night, the two will be closely paired, only about three degrees apart in the sky. That's close enough that you can fit both of them in the field of view of a pair of binoculars. Mars is quite noticeably dimmer than it appeared in October, when it shone about twice as bright as the star Sirius in the sky. Right now it shines about as bright as Aldebaran, the eye of Taurus, the bull, and only slightly dimmer than Betelgeuse, the fiery orange-red shoulder of Orion. Its appearance in telescopes is very different too, with hardly any surface features visible even through large scopes. Here's a comparison between the apparent size of Mars in a backyard telescope tonight versus how it appeared in October. The difference is how much farther it is from us now about 90 million miles farther. It was at opposition in October, opposite the sun in the sky, and now it's well behind the Earth in its orbit and getting farther away every day. It's a small planet to begin with, so even at its closest, it tends to be a bit underwhelming at the eyepiece. But do give it a look if you get a clear night and have access to a telescope. While you might not see any detail, you'll definitely see a small disk and be able to tell it's a planet and not a star. While you're looking through the eyepiece, don't forget to take a look at the moon. These nights surrounding the first quarter moon on Friday are some of the best for telescopic views of the moon. The terminator, or shadow line, falls about halfway across the face of the moon, and the textures of the craters and mountains is a breathtaking sight even through small scopes. I took these images with a smartphone held up to the eyepiece of my backyard telescope. From one night to the next, new features are highlighted, and a crater you saw last night might look completely different tonight under new lighting conditions. Well, as you gaze at Mars and the Moon, consider the fact that we don't have to rely on Earth-based observations alone to learn about these worlds. People have walked on the Moon, and spacecraft continue to visit it and unlock its mysteries. No person has yet ventured to Mars, but robotic spacecraft have been going there for five decades. Just last week, two spacecraft entered orbit around Mars. The HOPE orbiter from the United Arab Emirates, followed closely by Tianwen-1, a combination orbiter, lander, and rover sent by China. The deployment of the lander and rover is expected sometime in May. These missions were launched last July, as was NASA's Mars 2020 mission. Years with a Mars opposition, like 2020, are the most fuel-efficient time to send spacecraft to Mars, so it's no coincidence that all three of these followed essentially the same launch and arrival timeline. Well, tomorrow, February 18th, is the big day for the third of these three missions to arrive. NASA's Mars 2020 mission is on course for the Red Planet, and on board is the Perseverance rover and the Ingenuity helicopter drone. The target on Mars is Jezero Crater, a crater about 30 miles across that was once filled with water, forming a deep lake about the size of Lake Tahoe. Getting to Mars is challenging enough, but landing on the surface in one piece is significantly harder. The drama of the landing is part of the fun. Perseverance will attempt the same dramatic landing as the Curiosity rover in 2011. After entering the Martian atmosphere at around 12,000 miles per hour, the vehicle will slow down considerably due to friction with the atmosphere. About four minutes after entering the atmosphere, it will have slowed down enough to deploy parachutes, and the heat shield will detach. At this point, the rover's cameras take over, determining where the safest landing spot is within range. At an altitude of just over a mile, and still traveling at 200 miles per hour, the back shell separates, 
and the rover and descent stage fall for the powered descent. The engines fire up and slow the descent to just under two miles an hour. 60 feet above the surface of Mars, the rover is lowered on cables that are about 20 feet long, and the rover gets its wheels into landing position. As soon as the rover touches down, the cables are detached, and the descent stage flies away, and the rover is hopefully safely on the surface of Mars. This already exciting landing is all the more dramatic because it's completely automated. There is no way for operators on Earth to affect it in any way because the time it would take commands to travel from Earth to Mars or for data to get to Earth from Mars is about 10 and a half minutes, the light travel time from Mars right now. The entire landing sequence from atmospheric entry to touchdown is only seven minutes long. So by the time we get information from the spacecraft that it has entered the Martian atmosphere, the rover is already on the surface, for better or for worse. NASA has dubbed this the seven minutes of terror. While the technique worked flawlessly in 2011 with the Curiosity rover, there are plenty of failure points, and I know I'll be watching nervously tomorrow, February 18th, as we find out how the landing went. Well, you can watch too by joining the Adler's live Mars Rover Landing Watch Party tomorrow, February 18th, starting at 1 p.m. Central Time. As the rover closes in on Mars, this live broadcast will give viewers an exclusive look at rare Mars-related artifacts from our collection and connect the story of Perseverance to some of the stories of space exploration featured in our exhibitions. Adler staff will facilitate live discussions and provide commentary during the rover's landing. So be sure to check that out tomorrow, Thursday, February 18th on the Adler's YouTube channel. And the fun doesn't end with the landing. Assuming all goes well, the mission also includes the Ingenuity helicopter drone. This drone will make short flights to scout driving routes and points of interest for Perseverance, and also serve as a prototype for potential future autonomous aircraft on Mars. It's definitely an ambitious vehicle and the team is going to take it slow and make sure all the drone's components are working and have survived the trip from Earth and also the very cold Martian nights on the surface. Sometime in the spring, though, we should get to witness the first test flight of Ingenuity. So plenty of excitement on and around the Red Planet this week. I encourage you to not only follow the coverage of the landing, but also get out there under the sky yourself and see from afar the beautiful planet Mars in the evening sky. Well, that's what we have for you this week. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel and keep up to date with all the great content we're putting out. Also, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week.